Today we're going to look at Modbus TCP, specifically the client blocks, uh, to go along with another server video that I've made. So the first thing we want to do is make sure that we have the Modbus library. So that's um, plcnextdoor.com, and then we're going to search for the Modbus library, and today we want Modbus TCP. Um, it's going to show you the latest build. I think today we're using build number 14. Um, it's just some other issues that were fixed in the new 15. So if you are doing it, feel free to jump to uh, library 15. Um, once we've got it downloaded, we're going to move back over to the software. Now I am going to make some assumptions that you've already done a Hello World program and you know how to at least write a program and, and manipulate some variables. So uh, libraries, we want to add a user library. I do have the 15, but I am going to use the 14 today. Um, so that's under my downloads, TCP 14, um, and then under files, that's where you're going to find the library. So if you double click on this library file, boom, it's going to drop it in there, and then it's going to give you these new function blocks. So setting up a client. Um, the first one is this TCP client block. It looks just like the server block, um, only slightly different. So what we have is we have a variable to activate the block. We are auto acknowledging any errors that come true and then making the block false again. We have our IP address. We are hard coding it to our server PLC. So our other PLC next running a Modbus server block. And we have a couple other things down here like ports, um, IP address binding, um, things like that that we don't need to worry about for today. Uh, reconnect delay and timeout have values given from the block and there's no need for us to adjust them for this example. And this last little piece is just shared among all the blocks that you have connected to this TCP client. So remember, it's only what's connected to this TCP client. All right. So we're going to look at function code three real quick. So function code three, we have an X activate, which we're activating upon this block being ready. We have an IMTID. So this is unique identifier to this client block. So you can have up to 10 blocks per client block. Um, I know that's a bit confusing, but what happens is this block does these this block starts, these blocks go in order by the IMTID, and then it starts over. Um, so I've given this IMTID number one, and I've given this one IMTID number two because they need to be unique. Um, update time, that's uh, how quickly do you want the block to cycle. They can be different, um, and I believe the default is 500 milliseconds, which is fine for today. The U identifier that would be if you had a Modbus RTU device being pushed over TCP through like a gateway. Um, you may need to find that device uh, as a separate as a separate piece. Um, if we look at the help file, just real quick, I've already got it pulled open um, on the FC3. Um, you'll see that this IMTID value in the range from one to ten, and it should only be aligned once per Modbus TCP client. Um, so you notice we've did that. Um, our start register. Now this is where you'd have to normally pull out, uh, say, a manual or a data sheet on the sensor that you're working on. But in this instance, I already have a server block already started. And I was actually smart enough this time to put the registers um, <laughs> that I'd like to use. So in this case, we are going to a function code three reads holding registers. So if we'll look, the Modbus server is sending us data on registers zero, one, and two. Um, so our start register is going to be zero and our quantity of registers is going to be three. So if I had you know, five data points here, it would be five. If I only had one data point, it would be one. Um, so it's only reading the chunk that you've asked it to. Um, so you're not reading, you know, a thousand parameters when you only need to read two. Um, and then it's putting them into this array, um, which is an array of words. 
And then we're going to look at function code 16. So same thing as function code 3, except now we're writing data. So if we look, um, we're reading data from this client. So the client is sending us data with function code 16. Um, and if you'll notice, the start register is 10. And then we're reading 10, 11, and 12. Um, 10 in hexadecimal is A. Turn me up for a little bit. So word pound 16 pound A is 10. And then we're reading um, three registers, just like we were above. One, two, three. Um, and then you'll notice that the array is being put into this uh, word array. Um, I did do a little bit of movement of the arrays just so that we can see the data in a, in a readable format um, on, say, the HMI screen like this. So that way we can actually see what data we're sending and then read the data that's being sent to us. Um, so basically, I'm just saying um, take the first three elements of function code 16 and put in these three variables and then read uh, from function code three, the first three variables. Now I will say in the server block, a, the array element starts at zero and in the uh, client blocks, the arrays start at one. Um, so just keep that in mind when you are doing it, that zero um, is an invalid call to the array. Um, now I've already got this block activated and running because um, I've been playing with it a little bit here. Um, but if you'll notice, um, we are connected. Um, that is, this is a button and it is saying that we are connected. If it was gray, that would mean that the client is disconnected from the server. And we can test that by just saying, I want to send it a 65 in data register zero and boom, we get a 65 in data register zero. Um, we can change all these 65, 75, 150, um, doesn't really matter. We could put any number in here. And then when we're sending data, same thing. Right now it's 30, 60, and zero. And if I make this 1500, um, the PLC will then put that data uh, onto the Modbus and this server will read it. Um, so that is a very, very basic Modbus TCP client. I am only reading from the Modbus server that I created in a previous video. So this is very basic. We are going to go into a little bit more in-depth in a structured text uh, environment uh, to show you some more, some of the advanced stuff we can do inside um, the TCP blocks.